welcome you to the Tuesday, January 14th, 2020 uh, <laughs> school board meeting. Oh, it says 2019. It says 2019 on there. Uh, excellent. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's 2020. 2020. Uh, first is adjustment to the agenda. Are there any adjustments? <laughs> I'd like to adjust the date. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. We got it. Anything else? Okay. May I have a motion for item two? I move we approve the board minutes from December 10, 2019. I second that. Uh, is there any discussion? Any comments? And can I have a vote, please? All those in favor? Great. Um, comments by student representatives. Um, so we're in the midst of winter sports, as you can, you probably know. Um, the student council raised over $250 for the Boys and Girls Club um, during winter break, um, which was awesome. The juniors are currently um, creating resumes and will be doing mock interviews um, next week for college, which is really cool. And um, also midterms are next week, so we're just gearing up for those, which is awesome. So. <laughs> Everything's good. Well, good luck. Thank you. Um, so, let's see. Item four, comments from public on the agenda. Are there any comments? All right, seeing that there's none, we'll move on to presentations, the legislative sentiments by Representative Carney and Senator Millett. Thank you so much. Hello and good evening. We're here to present a legislative sentiment to the mock trial team, the students and coaches and, and faculty who were involved in the state championship um, achievement this year. And what I think I'll do is read the legislative sentiment and then I can deliver it to the superintendent or the school board chair. Um, State of Maine, be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, join in recognizing the Cape Elizabeth High School mock trial team, which won the 2019 state championship. We extend our congratulations and best wishes, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 129th legislature and the people of the state of Maine. So congratulations, everyone. Uh, just very briefly, I just want to um, commend a uh, few students and faculty and coaches and advisors and parents um, for, I'm sure, which are long hours, lots of hard work, um, and continuing this really remarkable legacy um, here in Cape Elizabeth with the mock trial. So, um, well done, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Should I give this to Mary <laughs> Yeah. So, um, I'd like to invite um, Mary Page. And if David Hillman would like to come up, we're, we have some awards for mock trial. So if you'd like to come to the podium. Very proud. 
proud to have won the state championship back. This will be the ninth, this is the ninth win in 10 years for the team and they have, uh, we have a, this is just a small assortment of the 24 students that won for us and they do outstanding work and we're excited to move on to Evansville, Indiana, which does not sound like an exciting destination, but once you arrive, the competition, the camaraderie, uh, camaraderie oh my God, I can pronounce it. Anyway, the, the, the way the students come together with other students from across the country is really exciting to see. There'll be a great deal of practice, many practice sessions in the evening, but these kids are up for it and we are all excited. So, without further ado, uh, a captain of the team, Swetha Palanapian. Marco Hansel, Hansel, sorry. Dick O'Meara, I do also want to recognize our lead attorney coach who may not be coaching us uh, next year. He's been with the team since 2004 and does outstanding work, but he always prefers not to attend these kinds of sessions. David Hillman, he's duly assisted by David Hillman who's also been with the team since about 2007. <laughs> Lexi Pilk. So again, there were 24 students involved, but I only read the names of those who are here. Uh, others are probably busy studying for midterms. So we thank you for your support, and uh, we look forward to working with you, especially as we do fundraising going forward. Thank you. I want to say a, say a few words. I mean, there's a microphone, there's a crowd. <laughs> I just can't resist. Um, I'm an attorney, or was an attorney, in a Burl Daner in Portland, and I've been teaching Mark Crow for 14 or 15 years in Cape. I also taught it at my law school at Yale, and I also taught it at University of Maine. Um, just so you know what Mark Trial is, they basically do a trial. They um, give opening statements, closing arguments, examine witnesses, cross-examine witnesses. It's just a regular trial. They have to know the rules of evidence and they deliberately make these cases complicated enough in terms of the rules of evidence that I watched these judges make terrible rulings on some of these evidence things that these kids know better than they do. Um, we're lucky we have Dick O'Meara as our head coach. He's been doing it longer than I have. Um, it, is a lot, it is a large commitment for these kids, a, a real lot. They have to spend hours. They have to learn the rules of evidence. They have to learn procedure. You have to learn the fact patterns of six witnesses. Um, they really do an excellent job. And what's nice about it is unlike any, it's a, it's a unique way to get what I would call pure critical thinking. They have to stand up in a courtroom with a judge, with another team, trying to uh, pick apart everything they do, and things happen. Witnesses forget stuff, judges make absolutely nutty rulings, and all kinds of things happen. They have to adjust. They have to adjust on the fly to changing events, especially people who do closings. They have to f realize what actually got into evidence, what didn't, and make an argument. And uh, they start out, we have a lot of freshmen over there. We have a lot of freshmen every year. They start out wanting us to give them the answer, a little matrix to every single problem. We, we keep telling them, you can't. I can't predict what's going to happen. And so they have to learn, and they have to learn it well. And they. Um, this year have done a, a really good job and I'm, we're all really proud of them. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Come right over here in front of us and we'll, we'll all gather together.
Thank you. again and congratulations. Next up are administrative reports. We've got our principal updates. I'm going to let you duel it out. <laughs> Good evening. That's amazing to see the mock trial um, champions and I think most of those students probably went all the way up through Pond Co through the, the department and, and um, started in Pond Cove. It's kind of cool to see from my perspective. Um, I have a few things to share with you this evening. Uh, on Monday morning, um, our students attended an assembly, our second uh, Peaceful Pond Cove Assembly of the Year. And I referred to this in my newsletter this week, but I still thought I'd share a little bit about it. We have uh, two assemblies now. Instead of having a whole school-wide assembly, um, each, each trimester, uh, we have two assemblies. We have a K2 and then a 3-4. It makes it, a, it's still a large group, a little more intimate. Kids are closer to the stage. So we had our second um, Peaceful Pond Cove Assembly of the Year, and it was around New Year's resolutions, and, um, and students are, at, as a result of the assembly, classroom teachers are working with students, and they're making a, a class resolution and we're posting them in the lobby. So it's kind of a cool um, community building activity. So those should be going up really soon. Um, just a couple things coming forward. Uh, parents will be able to access their child's report card via PowerSchool on February 7th. So teachers are working really hard now and throughout the next few weeks. Um, assessing and documenting progress to date, and we're looking forward to sharing those cards on February 7th. With the help of Kathy Stankard and our content lead, we have ELA content leaders, math and science, um, those are teacher leaders, and we've made a lot of improvements to our report card over the past few years. Um, so we're, we're, it's a document that we're really proud of now, so we're excited to get that out to parents on the 7th. And of course, just a reminder that um, this week at Pond Cove is NWEA assessment time. And this is our third year of utilizing the NWEA as a universal screener for all students in grades one through four. And um, we're getting better at administering it, getting more efficient at analyzing the data and using it to uh, plan instruction and to identify students who need extra support or are ready to accelerate. So we're just becoming more and more comfortable with the NWEA and realizing its benefits. So the testing window is this week. And finally, something new at Pond Cove. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about a student leadership opportunity we have for our fourth graders. Some of you may have heard of this. Um, I, some of our teachers, uh, and I hope I may miss someone, but Tara Bucci and Aaron Taylor, our nurse, and Tom Sheltre were among a small group who wrote a SEAF grant to receive um, some seed funds to start our gr Peaceful Pond Cove grade four helpers. And so it's a student leadership opportunity for our fourth graders. Uh, students who are interested actually apply and fill out an application. And um, students this week, well actually it's not until, the, it's not until Thursday, I think it, that might be the 23rd. Uh, students will be attending a uh, school leadership training session. It's at the fire station after school from 3 to 6 p.m. And so it's just kind of exciting. It's really, um, uh, a great opportunity for our fourth graders and we have many who have applied and many many will be accepted and be able to participate so we're excited about that and the work they're going to do I think will evolve but it's really around uh, student leadership fostering safe respectful responsible school environment and, and helping younger students and working with younger students so I'll keep you posted on how that's going we're excited about that that's all I have for tonight. I don't know if anyone has any questions or... Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. 
Hello. I never know what glasses I'm on. My daughter's bought me a whole bunch for Christmas. Some are one, some are 1.75, some are two. <laughs> so I'd always have to judge where I'm at. But um, a couple of things. It's really interesting kind of following up with what Jason just said. That The group of freshmen were kind of the seventh graders that broke me in, <laughs> right? So it's nice to see, and you, and you can start to feel more like a part of the community and, and the school when you start to see the kids that you know go up through and, and kind of have that experience. But from seventh graders to kind of leading and representing our school, I think it's pretty cool how fast that time really goes. Um, and it's nice to see those kids grow up and be successful. Um, a lot of stuff's going on. NWEA's winter session, we decided this year to not test all students in the middle school. Um, eighth graders are being tested because it has a lot to do with placements for the high school. It's another, another data point that we use. Um, and then some students that may be at risk or want to, uh, we might might be an intervention and working their way out or whatever are taking it. But so we're trying to reduce some of the testing for some of those kids. So the winter session is not happening for everybody. All eighth graders are doing it and taking it this week. Um, so that's kind of, and then they can take it again in the spring if they think they've improved their score or whatever, but it's just another opportunity for them. Uh, so that's a little bit of a difference. And we have new electives starting, I think in a week. And it's really exciting to see the elective program kind of grow. So one example is Susan Dana, who is our um, Spanish teacher, and she's amazing, but she's also an amazing technology teacher. So we've kind of <coughs> talked and begged her into doing some technology um, opportunities for kids. So she's, a, she's wonderful at it. That's starting to grow, that group. And the cool part is there's a couple teachers in there taking it kind of with her too now, so they're learning with, with their kids and with her, and then they're starting to apply some of that. But the big one that they're working on now is uh, they're trying to come up with a bunch of small little videos produced by the kids that are all like frequently asked questions. You know, so if you were an incoming fifth grader, what would you want to see? And, and then take it from the parent's perspective. What do they want to see? Because they're not, they're not interested in the same things. So what are they? So knowing her, um, work product, I'm assuming, I have a feeling that's going to be really successful. Um, and I think it'll go right up on our new website and it'll be something that we can click on and actually get some information out there through our kids. So I think that's going to be really powerful. That's one example of how those work. Um, this time of year is always budget. Another really exciting opportunity that we have is through our peer visits. Uh, we're doing some tech integration. It also, we're trying to be creative to get the extra stuff in the day without jam packing it. So all the kids are doing CPR. They're almost wrapping up with that now. And Officer Galvin and Chief Fenton are going to come in and work with, they'll see every kid um, with a different program focus for fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. Uh, so I think that's a, another really good use and tie into our community that we can get for, for our kids. And they're very excited to, to have that chance. Um, we have some website training tomorrow because the website is kind of up and running, largely thanks to Kathy. Um, but it's starting to be, I'm excited to be there on the rollout of it because it's much easier to learn how to use something when we all learn together instead of come in late. So I think the, the website's been a huge improvement and I, and I think we'll start seeing that and hearing that feedback, I hope. Other than that, I'm, I think that's it. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, George. Thank you. So just a few things. Um, Ali said it's midterms week coming up next week. Um, and thinking back to the holidays uh, just a, a few weeks ago now, um, the high school faculty have been talking a lot and concerned about stress. Um, and before the holidays, um, I made an appeal to teachers to minimize, if not give no homework over the holidays. Um, and I think that most of the teachers laid right off of things compared to what had been the case in the past. There may have been some exceptions, um, but I think in many cases uh, teachers um, in some sense needed permission because they have really high standards for themselves and for their kids. Um, but, but I was really glad to hear back from the kids that I work with in my advisory group and in some other kids as well that things that they were able to enjoy their holidays without as much thing, school, school things intruding, which was great. 
Um, yesterday, I had the opportunity to attend a planning meeting for the sexual assault awareness for everyone um, day that we're doing for all juniors and seniors on Valentine's Day, February 14th. I've mentioned this before. Um, I wanted to mention it again. Um, and in this context, first of all, to thank the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation for their support for this event for the second time in a row, um, which is awesome. It's gonna allow the, the students and the faculty who are working together to put together this day to have a really quality day. I also wanted to thank some presenters who are volunteering their time to our students that day, Leanne Dodge, who works at the University of Southern Maine and South Portland School Department. Um, an organization in Portland called Through These Doors, formerly known as YAP. Um, then another group, Sexual Assault Response Services of Southern Maine, or SARSM, um, who is donating some time from, for their, from their employees. Um, an organization called Prevention Action Change, which is also headquartered in, in Portland, and the lead person there is Clara Porter. Um, the, the sort of keynote event of the day that all students will be participating in is, is a presentation uh, by an organization called Speak About It, um, which was actually an outgrowth that came from Bowdoin College quite a few years ago, and it's now taken on a national sort of um, complexion. They do work all across the country to open up conversations about sexual assault and consent and those sorts of things. Um, and then I wanted to um, give a shout out to the Cape Elizabeth Police Department, um, particularly Chief Paul Fenton, who spent two hours working with the kids and students yesterday, saying I'm happy to help in any way and sort of tailoring what his presentation was gonna be. So I think the student, it's coming together. The students are really excited about it. Um, and I think it'll be a good day for it. Um, and I, I also wanted to thank the school board for at least having faith um, that, uh, in that day, um, because it is a big investment of time and we're also doing some creative things to allow the entire building uh, to be used for events connected to the SAFE event. So our ninth graders are going off to do community service, our 10th graders are going off to job shadow experience, and um, thank you for your faith that we will pull this off. I think we will, I think it will be, I think it will be good. Um, I do say, I will say that I do see some direct connections between some of the school boards, conversations I've sat in and the strategic planning and other ways around getting kids involved in the community and increasing connections. And so I'm, I'm really happy about these events and knock on wood, they will go the way we hope they will go. Um, I also couldn't resist um, mentioning the mock trial team. Um, and from this perspective, for I, some of you know that for I was a lawyer before I was a teacher. Um, so I, I assistant coached the team for a few years. I haven't done it for several years, but I assistant coached them for several years, um, and uh, it gave me an absolute appreciation for how much work everybody, the coaches, everybody puts into it. But we've been phenomenally blessed to have a wonderful trio of Mary Page as the teacher coach, Dick O'Meara as the lead attorney coach, and David Hillman as the second attorney coach, all three of whom have devoted years and years and years and hours and hours and hours, hundreds of hours every single year uh, with this incredible opportunity for kids. It is truly critical thinking. It is truly taking the, the thinking skills that they learn in school, K through 12, and applying them in a real life context. It's really exciting. Rumor has it that the trio may be breaking up this year. In fact, we may have a complete <laughs> a complete rebuild. Um, I, and what, if that's true, well, I'd be absolutely sorry to see them go. Nothing but thankful for all the years of service and the accomplishments that they are responsible for and the leadership they provided and the educational growth that they've given to hundreds and hundreds of kids over the years. So I wanted to mention that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Del is homesick today, and Kathy went home sick today. Oh, no. So. I hope they're getting the rest they need. So then that leaves Marcy, yes, our hi. business manager. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. So in the world of budget, we are full on in the budget process, getting ready to prepare documents and numbers get everything pulled together for you. And I am hoping in two weeks we have several pieces of good information. We are waiting on February 1st to hear about additional subsidy and the school revolving renovation fund projects. 
as well as maybe a bus, hopefully. So um, I'm hoping by our next meeting, we'll have some good news, fingers crossed. And in the meantime, we are at 50% of our fiscal year that has, a, that has been completed. And on our chart, I wanted to point out that for where we are right now with our general fund articles, we are at 48%. So again, we're at 50% of the fiscal year and we are at 48%. Last year at this time, at the at December 31st, we were 47.61%. So we're pretty much right on target from last fiscal year. So that's all looking um, really good. So again, I hope in two weeks we have some good news for everyone. Any questions? Yes. Um, Marcy, have there been any unforeseen um, issues come up that have affected the budget or anything that you just feel like we need to be aware of? I would say that we've been keeping a really close eye on the maintenance costs through facilities department and that's um, Perry has worked with us closely to make sure that we can kind of keep that under control. So we're trying to protect other areas um, from going over and really making sure that that doesn't keep going forward. So I'm really hoping that that can keep going at this percentage. We might see a little bit more in the next month, but. Okay, thank you. Anything else? All right, thank you so much. And we have started our budget meetings. Uh, Marcy and I have met with all of the administrators except for one, and we have our last budget meeting um, with them tomorrow. And we do go over each administrator's uh, original request budget line by line. We look at staff, um, numbers of students, um, increases, decreases. Uh, it takes about um, between an hour and a half to two hours per administrator, so we spend a lot of time um, really analyzing um, each administrator's original request budget. So uh, we've spent the last two weeks doing that, and I think we did four today. <laughs> Have one more to do tomorrow. So that process is in place and ongoing right now. So included in your packet is the uh, current enrollment uh, report, and you'll notice that we are down nine students from last year at this time. Um, but if you look at the middle school, you'll see an increase. So um, also there's several, um, this is the start of some information about um, budget. Uh, so you will see the latest uh, budget review schedule and we've gone through several uh, iterations of this and um, actually had to put a, <laughs> a new revision in today. So this is the latest. Um, we are dating the bottoms of those. So um, if you receive other ones, um, they'll be dated. Um, so um, look, look at the date on the bottom. Uh, so there have been quite a few changes. Um, we've been working with the town um, to try to get our schedule in place, so I think we're I think we're in pretty good shape now. Um, but there may be some changes as needed as we go through this. Uh, so as we start our FY21 budget development process, it's important to review the history of the budget. So um, there is a pie chart in your packet that shows, and this is the FY20 budget, but just you can see where the percentages of expenditures are for the various budget areas, and really from year to year, um, they look the, the pieces of the pie look pretty much the same um, if you go back through the years. But just as a starting point, you can see that um, Quite a bit of the budget is um, goes to salary and benefits. So salary represented 64% and benefits represented 19% of the um, FY20 budget. Uh, salaries and benefits are negotiated and we've just begun um, teacher negotiations and administrator negotiations. So that is in process. And the next document shows the recent history of state subsidy. We have, um, we have not received notification. It usually comes, if we're really lucky, the first week in February. Um, so uh, we're waiting for that. But if you, um, you can see where the largest amount of subsidy that was received by Cape Elizabeth was in uh, FY16. And we've had a significant drop 
uh, since then, although it did go up a little bit last year, which was, um, we were very appreciative of that. Our student enrollment um, on the next uh, page and professional staffing is reflected on this graph. And this shows the um, enrollment compared to professional staffing. And uh, en enrollment has remained fairly stable from FY19 to FY20, but um, staffing levels have gone up just a little bit, 1.17 uh, uh, full-time employees. So um, we're staying sta fairly stable with our staffing as well. This year, the, the change was impacted by an increase in the need for foreign, more foreign language instruction at the middle and um, elementary schools and an increase in EL services district-wide. Uh, if you remember, as a result in the projected number of increase uh, of students who need EL services, and that, um, that does continue. So um, we are uh, happy to welcome our new EL students um, into our district. Also included is a graph of uh, showing history of student enrollment based on October 1 counts, and that's the next page. Um, with a projection, pro projection next year based on students graduating and a projection of uh, about 100 incoming kindergartners. And we used 100 um, as a projection last year of incoming kindergartners, and we're, we're pretty much right, right, on, um, right on target. So there's also um, included a school board, the school board budget goals uh, for you to look at, and we are going to go into a discussion of um, these were the budget goals, the school board's budget goals for the FY20 budget. So um, we will be discussing those and um, developing some goals for FY21. So any questions? Not yet. This is, oh, budget calendar, I see. Got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so item seven, thank you for that update, Donna. Mm -hmm. Item seven, new business. Can I please have a motion? <coughs> I move we approve school board budget goals for fiscal year 2021. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? We need to create them. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, there will be discussion. Um, so I guess I'd just like to read these out first. These are the budget from last year so that the public is aware of it. The school board, the school board goals for the 2019-2020 budget are, number one, maintaining and improving the high quality of education for every student. Number two, careful examination of line items and consideration of the success and effectiveness of the expenditures in order to provide a fiscally responsible budget. And number three, clean and continual communication throughout I supposed to the be budget. Clear. I believe yeah. clear. <laughs> yep. Clear and continual. Clean could work too. Uh, clear and continual communication throughout the budget process. So uh, as a board now, it's time for us to discuss and see if we still agree with those uh, goals, if we want to add to it, if we want to shift them around. Is there any comment? Uh -huh. Kim I, I think, um, I feel like our budget process uh, was um, appreciated by the um, community last year and I think that um, that we really strive to increase the communication um, and so I would encourage us to keep communication the you know clear and continual communication throughout the budget process as one of our goals okay thank you I really Raise mm -hmm. my hand and ask to be acknowledged. Uh, um, I, I would, I'm happy to, if we feel necessary, add to this list, but I think this is the core of what our budget should be about. Um, my only wish, and this is 
silly is that I would love it to say maintain and improve and improve instead of maintaining and improve. There, there's tense issues in the goals that have bothered me since last year. Yes. <laughs> Especially when you read them. And out. I had to read them over and over yeah. again. But it's, Who's touching the thing? <laughs> okay, so you would like maintain and improve. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I feel pretty strongly that these should be at the heart of our work. Okay, and, you said and that. Echo what Kimberly said. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned that you're okay to add if, more. Is there something specific that you're thinking of? Not at all. Okay. You're just open to the possibility, keeping this as a core yes. three. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh. Um, so I don't know if this is appropriate to include this, but I feel like the budget process should be, um, even if it's not a specific line item, it should be approached in the context of the greater facilities question. So I don't know if that, you know, like I said, it's not a line item this year, but it, it's something that we sort of have to keep, keep in mind. Would that be something that you might recommend um, that at the beginning of our budget meetings, usually the finance chair, which is me again this year, um, I usually have an opening statement. So if the board felt strongly about um, that, that context being a part of, or at least a part of the consciousness of each mm -hmm. discussion, could be a part of that opening statement as opposed to being in the goals. Where I mean, I'm yeah. trying to feel out where do you feel, where does the board feel like it's most appropriate? Or, or hope if it was a goal, what, you, what would that verbiage sound like? What now are you thinking? Now that you've kind of fleshed it out, it doesn't make sense for it necessarily to be a goal, but it does need to be. Um, we're going to, we potentially could be going to the voters with not just this budget, but other things. So it can't be looked at in isolation. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're going to have to be thinking about that in the back of our minds. And you're right, it's not necessarily a goal because it's not part of the budget, but it can't be big mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, Nasser. Um, this is probably given or understood uh, in, the, in the bullet number three communication. Uh, I was just happy and appreciated the fact that the town council were, had a good presence in all our budget meetings. And I would like to see continue that as well. Mm -hmm. And there have been, much like last year, I haven't participated in them yet, but combined, what is the what is it called? The combined finance subcommittee. Finance mm -hmm. subcommittee. How many meetings have there monthly? Okay, so monthly. So that mm -hmm. has been continuing behind the scenes. Okay. Um, and so I guess my question to you is, are you referring as well to town council members who have come to oh, what's on the schedule and to yeah. our workshops and be interested? So we can, as we did last year, put out the invitation and make sure that it's very clear that they're aware of it, um, the meeting schedule, and hopefully some of them will show up. I, I think that that bridge was crossed yes. into the positive, and I, I, I'm hopeful that that will happen. Will continue. Okay. I, I think the relationship is such that that will continue. Great. Yes, Donna. Um, would you want to put something in here about supporting the five district goals that ha were identified, that the board identified? Mm. We're supporting the strategic plan. Well, yes, the plan has the, the plan hasn't been developed yet, but the we, we have the goals. Oh. So, I like that because yeah. that's what drives us to mm -hmm. make our decisions. Right. Yes, I think we found our fourth. Um, so, how do we want to make that number three, and then four is the communication? Yes. yes. Okay. <coughs> So how would we word that? Because we're hoping potentially to vote on this tonight. So if we could get support the strategic plan goals. Just simple. Support. Maybe at the start of the budget meeting, you would have to, maybe at the first meeting, just Pre review goal. them. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's not top of mind for everyone. Yeah. 
Could it be not me? <laughs> perhaps, perhaps we could use the review. And the facilities are part of it, yep. So when you mention that, it checks Hoke's box that the facilities are mentioned. Mm -hmm. So that's great. <coughs> okay. So do we like the simplicity of support the strategic plan goals? Enough. Yes. As they identified for year, present year, because there could be strategic uh, plan goals from, from the past as well. I don't know if you want to be that nitty picky that or not. That, uh, yeah, splitting out there if you want to be that specific or not. I is think it, it can't is it hurt. Given? A little so bit of clarity. Do, uh, I mean, I would... 2020 to 25. Mm -hmm. And this way, we don't goals. have to outline yes. the all, all of the goals here. Mm -hmm. Or we could just say support the current strategic plan goals. In other words, yeah. current. Correct. That's, mm -hmm. that would Let's work. do that. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay with everyone? And that's the last, that's number four. That would be number three, and then end with the clear, or clean, clear, and continual communication throughout the budget process. So we'd sort of stick that in as number three. Okay. Is there any other comments, discussions? Questions? I think it's great. All right, it looks like we might be ready to vote. So are all those in favor of these uh, budget goals for FY20, uh, I'm sorry, FY1920? No, FY2021. Got it. There we go. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> that was seven. Um, that was great. Important to have that very clear and all be on the same page with that idea in mind of what the goals are throughout this budget process. So I'm glad that that happened. Uh, next up, can I have a motion, please? I move that we approve the calendar for the SY 2021, yes, supporting documents and clothes. The calendar, <laughs> yeah. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Are you, the, the calendar committee representatives willing to talk a little bit about the process and the, the slight change in professional development? I can try. <laughs> it's been a while and I kind of forget. I don't have my notes on me, so maybe you can help me out. I um, help you out. We, yes, we, um, I feel like this whole process of coming up with the calendar really comes down to coordinating with paths because it, it, it ties us and that, um, that relationship that we've connected is so worth it for our strategic goal to meet the needs of all students, and it is a very worthwhile program. And as a result of that, we are only allowed to have five dissimilar days. Um, and we get knocked out for the election days, and um, then there are certain conferences that, um, school conferences that get in the way of causing that differences, and so, we are limiting ourselves. Um, that, therefore, the proposal is to start before Labor Day. And in respects to the staff professional development day, I believe that the conversation was around um, trying to be respectful of more classroom time mm -hmm. was one of the big pieces. And noticing, you know, looking at, stepping back and looking at the calendar as a whole and saying when um, November, which we've heard a lot of complaints over the years, all of us parents and board members and teachers alike, there's very few complete weeks. And so to really honor that as well, um, and so you can notice that we don't have a, um, a professional development day on in the month of November. We also uh, had a conversation about uh, a lot of the teachers really wanted the full day experience and wanted to be able to dive in a little bit deeper. Am I right about that, Kimberly? Were you there? Yes. Yeah. And so there are a couple of those. So there's a so couple of that. So of making a little compromise and pulling it from the, the shorter time periods of half days, but 
not taking so many full day um, professional development that it gets in the way and conflicts with paths enough. So a little bit of a combination of both so that there also can be a little bit more continuity than just, I'm making this up, but two full days. So there's more regularity in it, but that there is some time as well to dive a little bit deeper into it. Um, and that seemed to be a request from the teachers that they enjoy uh, going into that. Um, and that's what I'm remembering. Yeah, and I believe you maybe just said this, but I believe that the that there are actual half days now mm -hmm. instead of um, early release, yes, which which question. they have been. Um, so the I, I think uh, the the staff who responded it sounded like enjoyed having a little bit more time um, to really work work together, um, and we're finding that um, they were perhaps not bringing their fullest energy um, after teaching pretty much a full full day. So, mm -hmm. hearing I uh, appreciate the work that went into us and the thoughtfulness. And um, as a, I'm a, I was an early member of the calendar committee when our um, <coughs> superintendent sort of resurrected the practice. <coughs> It took a lot of work to kind of just get to the point where we could agree to build in some professional development time. And I appreciate that teachers gave it a couple of years and said, you know, what's working, what's not working. And um, and then and now we've done it for a certain way for a few years and now we're saying, okay, it's time to make an adjustment. So I appreciate the flexibility and the willingness to listen and work together in that committee in hopes that, you know, we. We may land on something that works for a few years, and that might not work down the road. But if we can find something that feels mm -hmm. productive and worthwhile to teachers now, mm -hmm. I say go for it. And I, I appreciate the work and the thought that goes into it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but did we pick up some additional professional development hours um, by I, I feel like um, Kathy had identified yes. that we are the sort of the lowest um, right. district as far as professional development. A couple extra hours by doing, we did less, there's less um, early release days, but um, longer periods during the days when it's a whole half a day one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think the one thing that I've been asked the most over the last two weeks is, are we starting before Labor Day? So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I just wanna speak up one more time and say I appreciate, you know, there's some thoughtfulness there. We're starting in September, but we're starting before, it's sort of like you, you walked a fine line mm -hmm. yeah. and we have a, a, a decent end date as a result. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think we would, probably would have been so celebrating the 4th of July together. Yeah. <laughs> and there is, uh, Labor Day is, I believe now, a four-day weekend, right, the Friday. Right, really nice for families. Is up, and Columbus Day, as well, I think, is a four-day weekend. See you there. See. See how it goes. There also, uh, just one more comment, um, there also has been a lot of discuss discussion, I'm sorry, around voting in the schools, um, because we, uh, that affects us, um, and as you can know, uh, there's no students on November 3rd, Election Day, and we have met with um, town officials, um, Deb Lane and um, Matt Sturgis, and there really is no other facility. We have gone through all sorts of possibilities that can handle the traffic, the, um, the biggest thing that I was not so aware of was the, um, exit polls and, and the, the, the space that needs to be provided for the extra people that come <coughs> to, uh, bless you, to um, advocate and present and that sort of thing. And so uh, you need that space. And so we have to be, as of right now, in the current state that we are in, um, continuing to use the space in the, in the gymnasium in the high school. Um, but we're but we're working around it to try to make it as safe as possible and um, going through some conversations around that. So um, we still can't have school that day, but we're working on it. Mm -hmm. 
Also, they're addressing this in Augusta now. Right. It seems to be a, a hot topic. Um, with uh, There's other districts that face the same challenge that we do, so um, they may come, come up with something. Mm. It would yeah. be nice if there was some sort of you know dispensation of, on, from on high with regard to that and a dissimilar day. That would be a nice right. change. Right. A recognition of that difficulty for a lot of schools. Yes. So, um, yes, and I'd like to thank Donna. I know she's taken several meetings with other superintendents to, it's a puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. It's totally a puzzle piece and everybody compensating and um, giving way and just working together to make this happen, so. Any other comments? All right, all those in favor? Uh, all right, next up is uh, school board agenda requests. Are there any? Okay, so now we head to committee reports. I guess we'll start with policy. Uh, the policy committee has not met since the last meeting, so we don't have any update, but the next meeting is on the 28th at 3 p.m. in the day. Okay. Technology. Thank you, Hope. Is there anything for technology? That hasn't met? No, haven't, hasn't met. Okay, great. Um, PAS. Uh, I was at the recent PAS committee um, with Superintendent Wolf from here, uh, which was awfully interesting, I thought. Um, one of the big takeaways that I took is that um, this program is so essential, we are losing in our state the people who can do these kind of jobs. Um, it's getting harder and harder to find manufacturing jobs. Um, or people, I'm sorry, it's harder and harder to find people to do the manufacturing work. Um, and so to be able to provide this um, opportunity for students to learn these skills is quite, uh, quite important, I think, in our district. One of the things that they have done is that they have changed from expanding their welding program instead of having a manufacturing class. Um, the students can experience the machines there, they can expand in their abilities to um, cultivate more skills, uh, and they can offer more spots in what's more useful. The welding is a little bit, am I getting that right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that's really powerful. The other one that they have added to, which I thought was uh, quite interesting, was the uh, dance program. Um, they're looking to add it from a half-time program to a full-time program. Um, they're able to show that they can fill full classes um, in both sessions. Um, and they've also been able to show that it has been a step directly into careers, um, which is their reason for expanding. Um, even though it's not manufacturing in that, it's more um, in the line with PAS, and they are finding that people who do these dance programs are becoming owners of studios, they're becoming dance teachers, um, and some are even professionally dancing. Um, so that's really great. Uh, they're also looking, and this is just conversation as of right now, but to expand into ninth and 10th grade. So currently it's an 11th and 12th grade program, uh, but they want to offer some sort of tapping into paths for 9th and 10th graders who are interested for experience. Not to head towards a degree, but to just get an idea of um, what it's about so that they can then make an informed decision. Um, the idea is to have it potentially both sessions, AM and PM. Uh, it wouldn't be the long two and a half hour slot. It would be a shorter time frame. Um, there's lots of questions around it. It's still in the beginning stages. You know, what would you do about busing and all the coordination of all of that? But um, the idea is coming from Lewiston, where I guess they're doing that up in the technical schools up there, and they're getting their ideas from there. And it's just this idea of um, exploratory. And the other big uh, piece that was coming out from that meeting was uh, visioning. 
Um, they're looking at, you know, what does PATH look like? Where do we want to head? What are our next steps? And so they were uh, putting out a survey to stakeholders called the Thought Exchange. Um, which I overheard you say you've worked with, but it sounded really mm -hmm. fascinating. It's one question, um, and and somebody then responds, and it's an open-ended question about ideas, and then one person responds, and then somebody comes in and responds to that, and it starts to build and create this sort of community dialogue. And as you do this, once the period is open for comment for a two-week period, um, Somehow, it's the program, was my understanding, mm -hmm. synthesizes it and provides you with certain themes that came out in the conversation. So there are your themes to then follow through with, um, all based on this thought exchange program, which sounded exciting. And so that's where they're headed. Um, looking into the future, making a few shifts to their programs. Um, anything else? That's not anything else. <laughs> Well. Okay. <laughs> Student wellness. Has there been a meeting? No, there hasn't, hasn't been a meeting. Okay. <clears throat> Buildings and grounds. <clears throat> Should I go ahead and speak to it? Okay. On um, Monday? Was it Monday? Tuesday. Tuesday. It was Tuesday of last week. We had the third out of our fourth uh, needs at Buildings and Grounds. Uh, meeting with the uh, architects and engineers and uh, so it was Simon Architects and Colby Engineers and they came and they continued to present to us as a committee <coughs> and there were a few uh, local citizens in the audience listening as well. Uh, they did a PowerPoint presentation that discussed the efficiencies and inefficiencies of the buildings, the reasons why um, they gave us a lot of data and a lot of facts is what I'm going to say. A lot of data and a lot of facts to go back and listen to. There was some interesting conversation regarding it as well. Um, and it was just a lot of food for thought. It's all online. Mm -hmm. if, if you go look up on, on um, the website, the school website, and... Um, yeah, there's a link for the building committee. The there's a link committee. for the building committee yeah. on the website. So instead of me trying to summarize it and maybe get some points wrong, since I don't have it all in front of me, I would recommend you go, if you're interested, and do the research yourself um, and look it up. Our next, we have another meeting coming up on February 4th. It will be the final, the fourth meeting of this group of four that we originally set up. Um, and that may be the call for further meetings if we don't come to a decision, decision being a recommendation to bring to the school board about next steps. Um, so, does anybody want to add to that? Uh, many of us were there. I know some of us were not there, but... Um... I, I would just um, come. There was a, a lot of information on our energy consumption and some comparison to other districts, um, which, which was significant. Um, and Matt Sturgis sure just uh, talked about sort of where we are as a town and... Um, what kind of debt we might be able to take on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, doesn't seem at the moment like it buys us a new school. <laughs> um, but the conversation continues. The conversation continues. We're still, I, I feel very strongly that we're still at very much a gathering of information mm -hmm. stage. We are by no means in a place to make any decisions or recommendations quite yet. Yes, yeah, no, sir. I, I was in that meeting. So, mm -hmm. uh, did they provide any information in reference to the grants that we had applied for subsidy? We applied for the state uh, in reference to be able to fix certain buildings. Were there any results? Mm -hmm. Or they're still waiting for February is the date? Well, we don't know. Yes. February is still the first date. Okay. Yes. All right. But they did explain certain things like. Um, you know, one of the item agendas that has been talked about is a, a, a new entryway for Pond Cove in the middle school for safety, and yeah. I think that's on the forefront of many people's minds. Okay. But the grants that you're referring to from the state would not 
be enough money to put right. towards that. So those were not put in. There are more things like window replacements, for yes. casings, and sort of smaller projects because not only is it a money monetary amount, but then there's also a time frame in which the project needs to be completed in order for it to um, to, to be able to happen. Is that correct, Marcy? Oh, good, I got a thumbs up. <laughs> I listen. There we go. Um, All right. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. So. It's kind of nice that we have that on the side, um, and it's, uh, I don't know, I see it a little bit as a, like a bonus, like it's a, yeah. it's like a little gold jar of coins that's like, ooh, yay, <laughs> but it's, it's not going to solve the problem, Correct. it's going to help, help fix some things, but it definitely isn't going to, and we're super grateful and so glad that it's happening, for sure. We hope, we hope. yes, <laughs> we'll find out soon. Did you raise your hand? Oh, no. Oh, cross that was from his cross. <laughs> All right. Uh, legislative liaison. That's uh, nothing at this yeah, point. Nothing at this point. Um, so then our upcoming meetings, we have uh, our workshop that is taking place on uh, the 21st, next Tuesday. This is our extended workshop. Do you want to speak a little bit more? Or is that enough to say, finance chair? I think, that's, I think it's fine. It's mixed. I can say two sentences, which is it's our extended budget workshop. Um, at that time, all department heads and administrators present their budgets so that the board and the community can really get the big picture. Um, it's not an evening for questions and back and forth. It's, it's really a listening evening. Mm -hmm. Great. And so we have, because it is the first presentation and we're not sure how long it will take, we have that Thursday, the 23rd, reserved as a possible follow-up. Um, we just, we don't want to be sitting there until 11 o'clock at night and not be thinking or being able to listen anymore. So there's that potentiality. Um, and then as Hope mentioned, January 28th at 3 o'clock, um, behind us in the Jordan Conference Room is the Policy Committee, and as I mentioned before, February 4th at 6.30 is the Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting, that fourth of the final fourth meeting out of the group of four, and um, that's in the Cape Elizabeth High School Library. Um, all right, do I have an motion? Number 11. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor. Thank you, everyone. So, so I'll do it. I promise, Marcy.